what's going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch this video in today's video we're gonna be talking about webpack and configuring it to work with Babel um, I'm pretty sure you already know what webpack is so I'm not gonna tell you all the necessities or like I'm not I'm not gonna just rant about what is webpack um, I'm not I'm pretty sure you already know what it is and you want to figure out what it is I mean you want to figure out how to actually configure it that's all you need to know so let's, let's get started and the first thing we need to do is actually download node modules or webpack and webpack CLI the reason why we need webpack CLI is because in the newer version 4.0 and up you need webpack CLI if you're running 3.9 or lower you don't have to have CLI so in our terminal yarn yarn add web pack and then web pack dash CLI and I'm actually going to download it as a dev dependency because we don't need it in our production so I don't want production to be downloading our uh, dev dependencies alright so the first thing webpack when we run webpack is it's going to look for a config file and that config file is named let's do it right now and it has to be in your root directory so inside of react bucket list so it's going to be called web pack dot config dot js just like so all right so this file is actually a node script meaning that we're going to run javascript inside this file and with node if you don't know nothing about Node or Node scripts or uh, how to actually import, export, all that stuff, well, there's a I already made a playlist of Node for beginners, and I'll link that in the, in the description down below. So check that out if you're not if you if you don't know what Node is or don't feel comfortable with Node, just check it out. All right, inside of here, this is where we're gonna tell Webpack what we want it to do. So we're gonna actually do module dot exports, and this is a Node thing. Meaning that we're just telling a hey, anybody could use this this file or what we're, whatever we're going to export. We're gonna, anybody could use it, whoever calls it. Okay, so what we're going to export is first of all, Webpack needs an entry point. Now, what is an entry point? Well, basically, we're telling Webpack right here, where do we want it to look at? Where is the main JS file that we want it to look at? So the main JS file that we have is app.js. This is every JavaScript that we have, and wherever every time we add JavaScript, it's going to be to this file, right? So this is where we want it. So we're gonna point it there. So forward slash src slash app.js. Next, it's going to look for an output. Where do you want it? Where do you want Webpack to spit it out? And Output takes in two key value pairs. The first one is the path. The second one is the file name. Now the file name, you can name it, it's just literally the file name. Like what do you want to name the file? The most common one is bundle.js, so I'm gonna stick with that. You can name it whatever you want. Now for the path. The path actually, you need to tell it where do you want it to actually spit out the file name, the file. We want it to spit it out in public, but the thing is, we can't do dot four slash. We can't do the shorthand version of the path. We actually have to do the absolute path. So Node actually has a pre-built module called path. So I'm gonna just uh, require it real quick. Const path. We're gonna equal to require dash path. Now this. This node module is going to help us get the absolute path. So what we're going to do is path dot join underscore underscore dir name just like that, and then public public. So it's like so. So underscore underscore dir name dir name gives us the absolute path to React to this folder, the React bucket list app. And then we just we want to just join concatenate public so it's going to give us an absolute path to this folder and then we're going to just join public so it's going to give us this this path right here inside of public and this is where we're going to spit it out all right next up an index.html 
I'm gonna give you a brief summary or actually one of the functionalities of Webpack. Webpack is we don't want to we don't want to run three scripts. We we want Webpack to just give us our one script, which is bundle JS, and just call that in here. So that way we don't when we actually do in production, we don't have to call five different scripts from five different places or servers. We don't want to do that. We just want to run one script that has all the stuff that we need. So that way it's faster. Okay. So in here, I'm actually going to give, get rid of this stuff. Now remember, we're getting rid of React and React DOM. Later on, we're going to have to install this to actually work with Webpack. But let's get rid of that for right now. And the script tag, I'm just getting rid of cross origin. What I'm going to do is call bundle. Hold up. Yeah. Bundle dot js because this is the file name that we gave it right now we don't have anything right now and in app dot js i'm going to grab everything council i mean comment everything out and then say log running from app dot js and src folder okay this is going to just give us a hint if it's actually running. So I'm going to just run this. All right. We're not done yet. We're still not done. We're going to get an error, obviously, because it's telling us, hey, there's nothing to uh, load. Bundle.js. There is there is no bundle.js. Now, we haven't told, uh, we haven't even ran Webpack. We're just configuring it. So inside of package.json, we're going to create another script that will run Webpack. Okay. So I'm actually going to change this to build dash babble because I'm going to name the script that we run webpack with build. So build is going to be set to webpack. And it has to be double quotes right here. Okay, just like so. Control C. Now, if you go in here, I'm actually going to my first terminal. And that's live server. Okay, that's cool. All right. Now we need to do yarn run build. Once we do that, bam, right here, app.js, running from app.js in SRC folder, which is this right here. Okay. And you can see a little bit of what it's doing right here. The time it was built chunks. We're not going to worry about that. The asset is called bundle.js and the size of it, 978 bytes. Entry point is our SRC app.js, blah, blah, blah. And don't worry about this right now, the mode op option. Uh, right now, we don't have to worry about it, but it's set to production by default. We can set it to development. Don't worry. We're going to do that later on. So now that we have bundle.js running because we already configured Webpack, we need to configure Webpack with Babel. Now we can't just over here, we can't just uncomment all this. We, we can, but we're going to get an error. Control A. Save. Save that. Control save. Did I save it? And if we run that again, Webpack, you're on run Webpack. It's going to give us errors. The reason why is because Webpack doesn't know what all this is. It doesn't know what this is. This isn't this isn't a JavaScript in Webpack's eyes. This is just like what what the hell is what is going on here? Right here, look at this. So the error is giving us is telling us we needed an appro appropriate loader. Now this loader is something that tells Webpack, hey, uh, we're going to be using this tool, Babel to do all this stuff. So just use Babel to do all these things and you'll understand better. That's basically what we're doing. That's that's a loader for you. We're just telling Webpack, hey, use this tool so that way you know what's going on, basically, right? So inside of Webpack, we're gonna have to add in some stuff, but first we need to add in React and React DOM because we took those out from the HTML. Now we need to run it Download it as node modules. So let's do that right now. Yarn add React 
oops, not not a comma, and React DOM. Awesome. If you go into package.json, we should have dependencies now. Yes. Now inside app.js, in here, we need to import those things because we are using those React components like React and React, where is that? React DOM. Okay, we're using those things from React, the, the modules we just downloaded. So import React from React, the module we just downloaded. And we're also going to import React DOM, oops, DOM, damn it, from React DOM. So it's like that, okay? Now, this still isn't enough to do anything because if you actually run it now, yarn add, I mean, ooh, not that, but anyways, yarn uh, run build, it's going to give us an error again. The reason why is because we're not using Babel whatsoever. We still need to tell Webpack to use Babel, okay? So let's go back to Webpack. And we're gonna add something to our export. So I'm gonna do a comma right here. We're gonna add something called module. All right, and module takes in rules. Now these rules is what we're what Webpack looks at to say, hey, is there anything that I need to do to understand the code that you just wrote? Yes, there is. And where where am I supposed to be looking at? Or what am I supposed to be looking for? Okay, and this is the things we're gonna be telling it. So we're gonna do rules. Rules right there. It's an array of an objects. All right. So for the first object or the first rule, I guess you could say, is our loader. It's going to take in three things. Our loader. Okay. It's going to take in test. What are, What is it supposed to be looking for? And it's going to, we don't, it doesn't have to take in, but we, we're going to include exclude. Okay, so the loader. First of all, we need to install a loader, and this is going to be a Babel loader. Now, if you don't know what what loaders Webpack actually works with, well, if we go to their documentation, webpack.js.org, I'm gonna say loaders right here. Transpiling, it's, these are all the loaders that it works with, all right? So we want we want a loader that has Babel. And here it is, Babel loader. This is going to use Babel using Babel. You see, we're just telling, hey, Webpack, use Babel for this. And for that, we need a Babel loader. So we need to install that. So yarn, yarn add Babel dash loader. And it's EL. Oh, I had that right the first time. And then dash dash dev because we want to save it as a dev dependency. We go into my package.json and we should see Babel loader right here. And you should have Babel CLI, Babel, and Babel core. I mean, Babel core because we do need this as well. You should already have it if you've been following along. So now with that said, Right here, this is the loader that we're going to be telling it. What loader do we want it to use? Well, we want it to use the Babel dash loader. And don't worry, it's going to look into no, in the node modules and see if we have it there or not. If it's not, then local machine. If it's not there, it's going to give you an error. All right, now the test. What do we want this to be looking at? Or what, what do you want? What kind of files do you want? Webpack to go through Babel loader. What, what, what are the files that you want me to go through Babel loader? Well, we want you to go through all the JS files, right? All the JS files because we're bundling, like like I said, a Webpack looks at all the JS files, combines them, and spits out one bundle.js. Well, we want it to be looking at, at all the JavaScript files so that way it could bundle them, transpile them, and then dump it into uh, bundle.js. So with this, we're actually going to be using regex or regular expressions. I'm not going to go over what re regular expressions is, but I'm going to just do a regular expression dot JS right here like this dollar sign forward slash. And this is just basically telling, um, H hey, is look for all dot JS extensions. That's it. And that's what I want.
and the reason why we want exclude is because we literally want to exclude node underscore modules we do not want to run node modules this this folder right here we don't want to run Babel. we don't want to transpile any, anything inside node modules don't worry about that so with this set control save now if we run yarn run build we have our bucket list app once again this is it for this video guys i hope you did learn something today and don't worry we're going to go into more about webpack and config later on because we are going to be using styling you know css and all that stuff and we're going to be using whatever loader that you want you, you can use less sass actually right here we go right here it could tell you what what do you want like styling you know style loader css loader less loader sass loader you know so it doesn't really matter which one you want to use we're going to be using sass but if you wanted to do less you could do it with less just follow along and this is exactly the same same stuff but definitely look at these loaders and try try to get ahead of me on the styling if you can if you can't then don't worry about it we are going to be talking about that in the future videos but that is it for now guys i hope you did learn something about webpack a little bit at least i hope because all we did was configure it to work with babel and that is it so thank you guys for watching this video and i will see you in the next video